The next talk topic we'll be talking about is causality. So, what is causality? Causality uh, is how we perceive the world. In other words, we know that there is a sequence of events. For example, event A happens before event B. We don't necessarily see B happening before A. And a good example of this is the is the classic wine glass, where uh, you know you have an opera singer. He sings at this glass and it shatters. Or we sometimes you see the experiment where they use a speakerphone and it shatters the glass. So we know that the glass was whole or form or, or a solid piece and then later because of sound or whatever it shatters and breaks but we don't spontaneously see the glass suddenly forming back together to become a whole goblet again so causality tells us that there is a sequence a natural sequence of events that occurs and that our perception tells us that there is a natural order to things now when discussing causality in terms of faster than light travel things can get a little goofy now, you recall in my last uh, episode, I described tachyon as kind of being, a, you know, a tachyon is a faster than light particle. And I described the behavior of the tachyon kind of like the Mad Hatter from um, Alice in Wonderland. It, it, it makes sense in its own mind, but to other people, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Now, this reminds me of the funny skit of Abbott and Costello when they're discussing who's on first. So let's play a little clip of that and you'll get a little bit of an idea of how confusing sometimes the behavior of tachyons can be or what happens to the order of events when we travel faster than the speed of light. So let's go ahead and watch that now. Friends, I told you that my partner would be here and here he is. <laughs> Didn't we expect him, did you? Now he always shapes up. Now. Why not let the folks themselves ask for something that they'd like to hear? All right, what would they like to hear? I'll something do it. different. Now, okay. Is there anything special that you would like to hear us do? Baseball. Any, uh, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, friends. You don't want to hear that, do you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, let's see. Now, we have on our team, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find then, out, the guy's name. And then, uh -huh. That's what I want to find out, the guy's name. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Now, Abby, you now, want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, now, you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> I'm telling him. You ain't said nothing yet. Go ahead and tell me. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Is on third. You know the guy's I'll... names on the baseball team? Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first base. <laughs> who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. Now, wait a minute. I'm, not I'm on... asking you who's on first. That's his name. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. That's it. <laughs> That's his name. Well, you ain't said nothing. I ain't asked you nothing. You did. You know the guy's name on first sure. base? Go ahead and tell me the guy's name on first base. Who? So obviously, Abba gets a little confused on who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know who's on third. So to explain this a little bit, we're going to think of a thought experiment. Now let's imagine that I have a gyroscope, and as this gyroscope spins, it's going to emit a pulse at every uh, revolution or say every half revolution. This pulse uh, triggers a laser beam that that sends a uh, light signal to a stationary observer. Now let's imagine that this gyroscope is on board a spacecraft and it's shooting away, um, traveling from a sublight from rest uh, up to the speed of light and then continues on to a faster than light speed. So we have this uh, gyroscope here. We can see that it's spinning and our little Einstein is holding a laser gun there and after each rotation it triggers the light pulse and it uh, signals his twin that is on earth. Now we put that uh, contraption inside a spacecraft and we can see that as it starts to accelerate up past the light barrier at regular time intervals it emits, emits a light pulse. So now we can ask what the sequence of events will be as this uh, gyroscopic laser system is carried on board a spacecraft. So here in this animation you can see the um, spacecraft launches off and then at regular time intervals a pulse is emitted. 
So we have pulse A, pulse B, pulse C, pulse D. So the question is, what order of events will a person at Mission Control on Earth, your twin, how will they view the pulses that you emit inside your rocket ship as you fire this laser gun, gun and gyroscopic experiment back towards them? So consider we have uh, two events. We'll call this event A and we'll call it the uh, second event B. So in other words, uh, when the gyroscope initially starts out, it sends a laser pulse and we're going to replace this gyroscope with a clock. So uh, here in this animation, you'll see the clock starts out at 12 and then it rotates down to the 6 o'clock position and then back up to 12 o'clock. So we're going to fire a laser pulse at the 12 o'clock position, let it come around to the 6 o'clock position, fire another pulse, and then come back up to the 12 o'clock position. So we have two events here. We have event A at the 12 o'clock position and then event B at the 6 o'clock position. Now we are going to consider uh, event A to be below the speed of light and then we'll consider the same case for a faster than light event going from C to D. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button and comment on what you think of my theories below. So what we're going to find out is that when, um, an obs when observers are, are below the speed of light, they're going to see a sequence of events. They're going to see event A happen before event B. So here in this time diagram, I have the control tower, and the control tower, of course, is at rest. We then have a rocket ship that launches from the Kennedy Space Center and just continues on in a straight line. Now then let's assume we have a space station with our gyroscopic uh, laser system in it and it's firing pulses at identical pulses, one at the rocket and then one at mission control. So that's going to be represented by this uh, little Einstein guy here. So imagine if you will that he fires a pulse and then he moves positions and fires another pulse and those pulses are timed with that gyroscopic clock that we talked about. Now, uh, let's, in this diagram, we're going to assume, uh, just to make a comparison, we're going to assume that uh, we can instantly know uh, when that pulse was fired compared to when we received that signal. Now, of course, in reality, this, this can't really happen, but it will illustrate uh, how one can perceive the order of events that occurs as the pulses are fired from the space station to the rocket and from the space station to mission control there at NASA. In this animation, you're gonna see the pulses are fired. Uh, we have event A and then you're gonna see event B fired. Um, so at NASA control, they're gonna see a, a normal order of, of uh, sequence. They'll see A fired and then B fired. So how will a rocket that's passing by see these same two events. And we can see that um, as the pulse is fired uh, from the same spot to the rocket ship, it, it, of course it's, he's gonna view it a little bit different so, so the, the signal is slightly skewed. And we can see that event, he will also record event A to event B. Now, uh, so each observer when they're below the speed of light and when the gyroscopic experiment, laser experiment that I've been talking about is also traveling less than the speed of light, then all observers, whether they're at rest or in motion, will agree that event A happened before event B. So now, what will this situation look like for uh, an event that is traveling at faster than the speed of light? And what we're gonna find is that the order of events is gonna reverse which implies that clocks that are faster than the speed of light will appear to run backwards. Now let's consider a slightly different situation. Again, we have mission control. They're stationary, sitting on Earth. The rocket ship zooms off. Only this time, we're gonna have a faster than light event that occurs from, and we're gonna call it event C to event D. So let's say this is some kind of a spacecraft that's traveling at faster than light speed. So um, it travels a certain distance, but it's traveling 
uh, faster than the speed of light. It's outside the light cone. And then it fires uh, laser pulses. And we're gonna assume again that these, this information can be instantly observed by mission control back on Earth. How will the laser pulses emitted from this faster than light spacecraft appear to uh, an observer on board a rocket ship that's traveling at a lower than light speed or how is it going to appear uh, to controllers at mission control? And we can see here that instantaneously we have event C that happens before event D. But in reality, these pulse pulses are traveling at the speed of light. And what we find is that uh, the perception as viewed by a, a astronaut on board the rocket ship, they're gonna see event D happen before event C. So it's completely backwards, it's reversed. So what that means is that an observer that is below the speed of light um, will see events that happen faster than the speed of light in the reverse order. So here in the animation, we can see event D occurs or is perceived to occur before event C. So event D is perceived to occur before event C. So in conclusion, what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that uh, an observer who's looking at clocks that are traveling faster than the speed of light will appear to be rotating backwards. Now I have to emphasize that your perception, if you're on a spacecraft and you're looking at your clock and you're traveling faster than the speed of light, it's gonna look normal to you. However, when that information is sent back to an observer on Earth or is stationary, it's gonna look completely opposite. The um, observations are gonna be in the reverse order than how you perceive them. So we have this dilemma of what happens first and what happens second, kind of like, like I said, the um, Abbott and Costello, who's on first, who's on second, and I don't know who's on third kind of thing going on. Now, because of this craziness that happens with tachyons, um, uh, led uh, Stephen Hawking to postulate the uh, chronology protection conjecture. And simply what that means is that uh, time travel and space warps simply are not possible because the order of events gets scrambled. Now, of course, this is just a conjecture. It needs to be scientifically proven. And I have to say that uh, up to this point, no experiment has been conducted to either disprove or prove faster than light travel. So thank you again for watching this uh, episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Your contributions uh, help uh, uh, fund my videos and let me know if there's anything I can do to improve them or if there's any topic or subject that you'd like to hear about. And check out our merchandise. I'll leave the link below in the description. Thank <laughs> you.